Welcome back everyone to the first episode of Space This Week in the year 2023. I hope everyone had a fantastic new year and I have quite a lot of stuff to discuss today from Starship news, launch news and a look back on the epicness that was the year of 2022 for spaceflight. So let's not waste any more time and get that intro card rolled. Uh, by the way, I am a little bit ill at the moment, so sorry if my voice sounds a bit weird. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Like a lot of North America, Boca Chica wasn't spared from the Arctic blast that's been sweeping across the continent. The sheriff of Cameron County posted a video of a rather damp Highway 4, announcing that the road and Boca Chica Beach had been closed due to the critical weather and Arctic conditions. Nevertheless, that doesn't mean we're completely devoid of Starship updates this week. For starters, Starship Gazer captured some pictures of some rather heavy-duty looking hardware being dropped off at Starbase a few days before Christmas. We're not entirely sure what this will be used for, but one theory is that these will be assembled into a Starship lift jig, so that the ships can be crane lifted without the need for the mounting points, like the ones you can see on this picture here, which crucially means that they can be lifted by crane in a fully completed state and won't need to have any heat shield tiling and the mounting points themselves added or removed. Tanner, an up-and-coming 3D artist on Twitter, created this render showing one possible configuration for the lift jig, which does seem to make a lot of sense, but we'll just have to wait and see for this one. Booster 9 remains engineless at the launch site, yet to undergo its first round of cryoproofing tests. One of the biggest changes from Booster 7 and 8 to Booster 9 is that Booster 9 will be the first Super Heavy to use electric thrust vector control hardware, rather than hydraulic control. And while it doesn't have any engines installed, it looks like they're nearly ready. Starship Gazer caught a glimpse into Tent 1 and caught this snap of lots of Raptor 2 engines inside with the new electric thrust vector control hardware. As for other boosters, Starship Gazer has caught some great shots of the test tank Ship 26 in the Can Crusher rig undergoing testing, and also the installation of Booster 10's fuel transfer pipe. We've also seen SpaceX continue working on the berm infrastructure at the launch pad. They've been extending the top of the concrete shield in the orbital tank farm for a while now, and they've started building up this part of the berm as well. Hopefully all good signs that Stage 0 is getting closer and closer to the first orbital flight test, which hopefully will be this year. One thing that SpaceX have been pushing for over the course of 2022 was their goal to launch 60 orbital flights. And while things have been pretty close throughout the year, the two Falcon 9 launches we saw last week put SpaceX at a final total of 61 launches for 2022. The first of the final two launches was on the 28th of December, and this was Starlink Group 5-1 the first launch for Shell 5 of the Starlink constellation, and the first launch of the Starlink second generation satellites. The other Falcon 9 launch was the Eros C3 mission, which launched on the 30th of December at the Vandenberg Space Force Base. The Eros C3 is an Israeli Ministry of Defense payload and is a very high resolution electro optical satellite, fitted out with multi spectral sensing capabilities. This mission was also the first SpaceX orbital launch to target a non sun synchronous retrograde orbit. The other two successful launches last week were both from China. A long March 4B launched the GFN 1104 Earth Observation Satellite to low Earth orbit on the 27th of December, and a long March 3B E launched the Cheyenne 1002 Technology Demonstration Mission to a highly elliptical Earth orbit on the 29th of December. You may have noticed that there wasn't a space this week last Monday, and that's because I edit these videos one day before they're published, which would have been Christmas Day for me, and to be honest, I just wanted to take a day off. I didn't miss much, however, there was only one orbital launch, and sadly, it wasn't a successful one. On the 21st of December, an Ariane Space Vega C launched two Airbus Defense and Space Satellites to low Earth orbit, but sadly, the second stage deviated from its intended course due to a loss of pressure, resulting in failure to reach orbit and subsequent re-entry over the Atlantic Ocean. A shame, Vega C is a relatively new launch vehicle, and this was only its second operational flight. Hopefully Ariane Space can fix the issue for future launches, and this rocket can go on to perform lots of successful missions. But enough of space this week! What about space this year? Or last year? <laughs> 2022 was certainly a crazy ride. We've seen some seriously impressive launches and spaceflight events. In total, there were 186 orbital launch attempts, of which only 8 resulted in failure, and lots of countries became space nations for the first time as well. We had the first Egyptian and Portuguese astronauts, and the first ever satellites from Moldova, Armenia, Uganda, and Zimbabwe. Of those 186 orbital launches, a lot of them were maiden flights for brand new rockets. 
This year saw the premier flight of the Angara 1.2, the Atlas V in a 511 configuration, the G-Long 3, Long March 6A, the SSLV, the Vega C, the Zoot Che 2, the ZK1A, and of course, the big one, literally, the SLS Block 1. <laughs> it's a shame that Starship isn't on that list. Here's hoping 2023 will see the Silver Beast finally take to the skies. In addition to Starship, we had also hoped to see Ariane Space's Ariane 6, United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur, and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries' H3 all make their maiden flights in 2022, but these three rockets have now been delayed to 2023. Which rocket launch was your favourite last year? There's quite a lot of big ones to pick one. Falcon Heavy, Firefly Alpha, Electron's There and Back Again mission, which saw their first helicopter catch in action. But I think the clear winner for most would be Artemis 1. How could it be anything else? The first major spaceflight of NASA's Artemis program marked humankind's first steps to returning to crewed lunar exploration. The launch was, by all accounts, a success. The Super Heavy rocket thundered off the launch pad at Launch Complex 39B at the Kennedy Space Center, carrying the Orion spacecraft for a 25-day mission that would see it complete a lunar lunar flyby and a six-day stay in distant retrograde lunar orbit before completing a second flyby and returning back to Earth, withstanding the fastest ever re-entry of a spacecraft built for humans before splashing down in the Pacific Ocean, setting the stage for Artemis II. Scheduled to perform a functionally very similar mission, but with crew this time, in 2024. And after Artemis 2, Artemis 3 will see a crewed lunar landing, some 50 years after Apollo 17, the last time we went to the moon. SLS was awesome, but there was only one SLS launch last year. Which rocket family had the most flights? Everyone, place your bets now. And they are off. Ariane and Astra are the first to drop out of the race. And Kwaizu looks like it's ended as well. Atlas there, capping out at seven launches, followed by Electron, which has stopped at just nine launches. Getting on some big guns now. They're still going, but look at that. R7, or the Soyuz, has stopped at 19 flights, but Long March and Falcon are still going. Who's going to drop out first? It's anyone's guess. Anything to play for? And oh, Long March has ended there with 53 launches for 2022, leaving Falcon to storm ahead to 61 launches. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> but you know, spaceflight isn't just about the number of launches or rockets flown, it's what we did with those launches. And in 2022, we certainly did a lot. NASA's capstone lunar orbiter was launched by an electron rocket on the 28th of June and arrived in lunar orbit on the 14th of November. This wasn't the only lunar orbiter mission. On the 4th of August, a Falcon 9 launched the South Korean Danuri satellite, which performed its lunar orbital insertion maneuver on the 16th of December. And of course, I can't leave out the Hakuto R mission, which launched on the 11th of December and is currently en route to the moon, where it will perform a landing and deploy a small rover in April 2023. We didn't just send robots to space though, lots of humans took to the skies in 2022 as well. Blue Origin launched a total of 18 people on suborbital trajectories aboard New Shepard, and over at SpaceX, their Crew Dragon spacecraft carried the first American space tourism mission to the International Space Station on the Axiom 1 mission, in addition to two other missions, which carried eight ISS astronauts on the Crew 4 and Crew 5 missions. Boeing is right at the cusp of sending people to space as well. In 2022, they launched the second uncrewed test flight of the Starliner space capsule, where it spent a few days docked with the International Space Station. Boeing hoped to launch the first crewed flight for Starliner no earlier than April 2023. 2022 was a huge year for China. They completed their Tiangong space station. Consisting of three major modules, this station reached its final size with the launch of the Mengtian Laboratory. The Tiangong is just over one-third the size of the International Space Station, and among other things, it features the first ever microwave oven in spaceflight. Hmm, interesting bit of trivia there. <laughs> this year, humanity made major strides in protecting ourselves from a world-ending asteroid impact. NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or just the DART mission for short, successfully impacted the asteroid Dimorphos, the minor planet moon of the asteroid Didymos, on the 26th of September. The purpose of this mission was to see if the spacecraft impact would affect the asteroid's orbit, and it did. The impact shortened Dimorphos' orbital period around Didymos by a staggering 32 minutes, absolutely smashing the success threshold of 73 seconds and validating impactor probes as a means of redirecting the path of an asteroid on a collision course with Earth. In sadder news, we said goodbye to the NASA InSight mission. 
Launched in 2018, this robotic lander was designed to study the deep interior of the planet Mars, and it did its job well. Its planned mission duration was two years, but in the end, it managed to soldier on for four years and 18 days, until it finally succumbed to power loss after its solar panels became too covered in Martian dust to supply adequate charge. We got one final image from the lander, released with the statement that my power's really low, so this may be the last image I can send. Don't worry about me though, my time here has been both productive and serene. If I can keep talking to my mission team then I will, but I'll be signing off here soon. Thanks for staying with me. Speaking of Mars robots though, Perseverance had a busy old year in 2022. The last big milestone was only just over a week ago actually, when on the 21st of December, it dropped a sample tube on the ground which will be filled with Martian surface samples that could eventually be returned to Earth. I love this animation showing what this will look like. This animation features the key moments of the upcoming NASA and European Space Agency sample return mission, which will land a robotic lander on the surface of Mars, which will then collect the sample tubes dropped by Perseverance and then launch them off the surface and ferry them back to Earth. This is definitely one of my most anticipated missions to look forward to. But 2023 has a lot to be excited for. We have the maiden flight of Ariane Space's Ariane 6, Blue Origin's New Glenn, SpaceX's Starship, and United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur. And of course, the maiden flight of untitled spacecraft, the death trap new players of Kerbal Space Program 2 will inevitably build when the game releases in February. What have been your favourite moments in 2022 and what do you most look forward to in 2023? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys all write. And hey, if you want to see your name appear alongside the lovely folks scrolling on the left hand side of the screen, then consider signing up to my Patreon program or channel membership scheme to gain early access to videos and help support what I do here. But thank you all so much for watching today's episode of Space This Week. I hope you have an excellent 2023 and I'll see you in the next one.